Anna de Nanthra, right? There was this whooshing sound, right? Spinning around in your head. With each cycle, it gets more electric, more violent, more static. It starts to echo as if your brain is an echo chamber. You start to see tracers around moving objects like your hand, and you often move your hand in front of you to observe the tracers and the interesting effects. This gets more intense, then an entity starts to appear, very crystalline in nature, very reflective, but also glowing, purple entity, very triangular, and it starts to speak with you. It starts to insert thoughts into your mind, and you start to sense this buzz, it's buzzing inside of your head, and it keeps getting louder and louder and louder, more intense. There is a sense of vibration, as if every single atom in your body is starting to vibrate violently. Is it actually Anna Dunanthra? I don't know, but it's a cool name, so let's just stick with it. There's a sense of something gone amiss. Uh, your blood has gone cold, and you notice this. You feel the blood pumping in your veins, and it almost feels like they are growing. They're growing outside of your body, into the nature around you, as you're laying on the soil. And they're digging your, your veins, they're digging themselves into the ground, into the soil, as if you're growing roots. And as your heart is pumping, you're contributing to the earth, you're contributing to mother nature with your heart. Every single bit of your heart pushes your self, your essence, your soul into the nature around you, as if you were joining it, helping it, becoming part of it. Your body was finally fulfilling its true purpose, assisting nature. Very strange sensation, something that can't really be interpreted in the normal state of consciousness. There was no shaman. There is no shaman. All there was was nature guiding you. As you grew your roots into nature, you didn't need a shaman anymore to guide you. <sighs> there was no shaman that was guiding me in this weird forest that I found myself in. Truly very, very, very strange. Phenomenal. So what is the moral of this story specifically, hmm? Pulsating veins emanating the strange liquid metal dripping out from your own pores. And they make these beautiful, lush, long, reverberated, ethereal sounds from within. It was incredible. It was... So what's the moral of this story? Did I already say Terence McKenna said that schizophrenia is a catch-all phrase for states of consciousness, states of mind that we just couldn't understand yet. And to a large extent, I think it's true. People living in a world of twilight imagining, who cannot hold a job, living on the fringes, imagining their made-up realities with their own value systems relative to both themselves and to the world around them. Western societies have a very little inherent culture of exploring consciousness. For that kind of stuff, you have to go elsewhere. And it makes sense that that's the case. It's because systems are fragile and they, the people controlling the system, they know that the system is fragile and they want to continue staying on top, controlling the system. So it is dangerous if people start exploring their own consciousness and try to impose new value systems that excludes their greed. One day, a lady in her 30s was seemingly out of candles for her cabin. She went to the merchant square looking for candles and a candle seller is something that she found, luckily. 
store was open. Well met, the candle seller exclaimed to the lady. I got the perfect candle for you. This pristine candle of truth that has a beautiful blue flame and a scent of a foggy forest. You'll love this, the candle merchant told the lady. What makes it the candle of truth? The old lady asked the merchant. Breathe in the fumes and the truth will be revealed, the merchant replied to the lady. She accepted the merchant's offer and she bought five of the merchant's candles. Success. She also bought some treats for her seven cats that she had. A lonely evening for a lonely lady. It's true. She lit up two of the candles, yes, prepared her canvas as she was going to get ready to paint. Painting was very cathartic for this lady, very cathartic for her sadness. Yes, she was just ready to start painting the first strokes of the painting when she was taken aback by the flame of the candle. It had grown more intense. The colors sharpened. It was as if her clarity was increased. She started sensing the scent of the candle, very nostalgic, very comforting. She looked at the blue flame. It had purple undertones, as if it was a portal in space. It was very, very beautiful, enchantingly pretty, she thought. She looked at it, very captivating it was, stared at it for longer, bewildered completely. The background started being blurred, out of focus for her. She started seeing patterns emerge in the background. Slowly, the flame started speaking to the lady. It transitioned from a simple flame to an entity that was there in the room with her. She was no longer alone. It captivated her entirely. The feelings of loneliness bid farewell to the lady. As the entity that was conjured by this candle started speaking to the lady, she finally started interpreting the first messages. The flame, it told her. 